thank you. Gosh, that's so easy when you have what you need, right? That's what we're going to learn today, hopefully, is talking about Canva, having what you need, right? So uh, I'm kind of in the Canva screen. That way I can still kind of keep an eye on chat as well uh, and hopefully respond to any questions. If I go full screen mode with Canva, I can't see the chat and I can't see you guys. So I don't want to do that. So um, we're going to uh, make this work uh, the way it is, which I think is kind of cool. So, um, so Canva, it's hopefully, like I said, hopefully graphics made easier, at least easier than what you might do right now. Um, I will be very bluntly honest about like myself, which is that I'm, when I first started doing online teaching uh, as, a, as a communications journalism writing type person, I put a lot of emphasis on my words and not a lot of emphasis on how it looked, right? Uh, more and more, the more I dive into this kind of stuff, the more I realize how important it is that things not only have the content that students need, but that it's a, it, there in a way that students can actually, you know, do something with it, right? So I want to tell you real, 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 real quick, there's a big difference between free Canva and pro Canva. And I want to dispel all of these things right away, right? If you are paying for Canva, you're more advanced than me, okay. which is, hey, fantastic. I want I'm going to nominate you to lead the next Canva workshop. Okay. Uh, free gets you 20, 250,000 templates. Free gets you 200,000 photos. Free gets you 50,000 graphic elements. Free get also free Canva also gets you, you know, the ability to update and change and make things go. What what uh, what you don't get with the free version of Canva is, I think it's something like, and I've, I've got a little table here. I'll show you. Uh, there's significantly more images built into Canva Pro, uh, more templates. You know, if 250,000 templates isn't enough for you, there are more templates that are out there. Uh, and also a resize option. And this is probably the biggest drawback of the free version of Canva is that you can't resize your images in Canva itself. But one of the beauties of working with Canvas right, not Canva, Canvas, one of the beauties of working in Canvas is Canvas lets you resize images. So you can build an image in Canva and resize it to whatever you want in Canvas. And so if you're using Canvas, that's helpful. <laughs> and, uh, if you really, really, really want to get into the breakdowns, like here's a whole big list of breakdowns versus Canva free versus Canva pro. Again, I use the free version. But if you feel like that's not enough, there's always the pro version available. But I wanted to throw that out there just as a, is this a tool that I need to be paying for? Um, the answer is probably not, but maybe, right? Probably not though. I don't believe, and some of y'all can correct me on this. If Citrus has an institutional account, I don't know of one. Going once, going twice. Maybe asking Senya, because I know we have licenses yeah. for so many different things. We may have right. a Canva license through OE. Okay, cool. Um, if one exists, I don't know about it, but we, we there's also a ton of tools out there, right? Uh, Canvas one. And again, Canva, the free version of Canva is going to get you a lot of different places. So uh, some updates, some recent things that we have seen in Canva. Uh, if you are doing any kind of collaborative work, Commenting is now a thing in Canva, which is cool. So when you have designs that you want to share, you can comment. You can also have motion graphics, animation, and you can actually build templates, which is kind of cool. You can build your own templates. Kind of cool, right? Um, so let's get into actually how we can use this tool. I, I, I wanted to throw some of those things out there just in case uh, before we actually dive into how we actually use this thing and how most of you, if you're here, from an education standpoint, trying to do this kind of stuff better. These are the big ways in which I've used it and which I've seen it used. And that's Canvas course imagery and graphics, building things for your online courses, uh, flyers for the various programs or, or uh, you know, departments or whatever that, you, that you're promoting, but also uh, posters. Uh, posters are actually kind of a big thing. So, uh, Mr. Overly, no, Canva and Canvas are not part of the same company. Canva is 
independent from Canvas. They and they don't really they they integrate as much as you want them to integrate, but the tools themselves are not integrated. Uh, so again, these are the three big ways I've seen them used. I'm going to try to show you some examples of, of some of these. Okay. Uh, also, uh, uh, some of these, I, I put out a call a couple of weeks ago in my Facebook group. I knew this presentation was upcoming and I didn't want to just share things I built. So I put out the call to everyone I knew on Facebook and I said, uh, how many of you use Canva and would be willing to share? So a lot of this is coming from a couple of different people who were willing to share what they did and how they did it on, on Canvas with Canva graphics. So uh, that's what a lot of this is, is actually people who shared their stuff with me. Uh, credit where credit is due. Uh, some of these are Canvas courses at Citrus. Some of them are uh, at other schools. Uh, and actually a good number of people reached out to me and said, Patrick, I'm not an educator, but I use Canva for my business or I use it for uh, this or that. And so that kind of stuff is definitely part of Canva as well. Not part of our focus today, but hey, don't rule it out. So buttons, buttons are uh, something that, like I have a friend of mine who puts all kinds of buttons in Canvas using Canva and Canva's logos. So again, this is not about, you know, you're not necessarily building a logo, but the logo template is just the right size for a button on Canvas. And so she takes the logo template, comes up with some consistent font choices, and ends up with these buttons that are all part of her Canvas shell. Right? Um, so this is like kind of her main page, and then she's got her weekly page, like here's week four, exam one, you know, and she has a weekly page that she's built into her modules. Here's the button to click to get to that. Here's your to-do list for the week. Here's your calendar for the week. All of that's accessible through these buttons as opposed to maybe text links, which maybe aren't quite as, as intuitive, right? Or certainly not as fun. Uh, so some buttons would or, or a fun way to, to integrate this. Uh, uh, for your class dashboard, you, you know, you can update the logo on the front. Hopefully, you know that. if you don't know that in Canvas, you can change what this image looks like. Uh, and you can upload your own and build your own in, in Canva and upload it. And this is just a banner, just a resized banner. Uh, and this is from a friend of mine who teaches at Cal State Fullerton. And for every class that she teaches, she has a unique Canvas banner that she's built to be what students see when they log in to see on their dashboard, which is pretty cool. And of course, she color codes them, which is, again, pretty cool. Banners are super handy. Okay. For, for all kinds of headers that you might have, whether that's in, your, in a weekly module or whether that's on an assignment or whether that's on your announcements, all of those are really, really easy to kind of make a little bit more visually appealing with a banner. And if you go and search in templates and you search for banner and you're like, but, but there's nothing really here, these are all built with the Facebook banner template. So again, this is, it's more about thinking about what you're trying to create and worrying less about what things are called in Canvas and more about, hey, how can I get to what I'm trying to accomplish? Uh, another version of this, more, more banners. Okay. Uh, these are for some pages and I've, I've really started more and more to embrace pages on Canvas. Uh, as a as a place to like kind of put things right COVID in Citrus College um, how to take your exam just building those in can be really 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 handy uh, and having that graphical element you know makes it easier for people to follow uh, here's some more banners uh, this is from another uh, person who's helped me out uh, presenting some of their banners uh, you know. The, the five rocks box approach to writing. Okay? If, you, if you are a writing teacher, being able to emphasize that. Okay? 
uh, here's, you know, start here, here's our banner, here's our class banner, week two, it's our module for the week. Okay. Uh, and again, all this is, and then AP style, practice quizzes, right? Building all of those elements there, you can see how they're, they, they're in, incorporated into like a canvas shell um, and where they're placed and how they're placed and how you can make them look good. So, um, and then as far as course content, so this is sort of like the posters arena or like infographics. If you have course content that you're trying to share, uh, uh, the one on the left, this is like one of the flyer templates. The one on the right is the infographic template in Canvas. And again, very, very much more interesting, visually interesting, visually, visually compelling way to maybe present information or to, I, I'm a notorious with my students for having very like boring black and white handouts. Uh, one of my goals is to change all of that up in Canva uh, very, very soon to make it more visually appealing. Because that's, that can be, that can be the difference between a student reading something and not reading something is, does it look like a slog or does it look like kind of fun? So, uh, Flyers are another thing that were really easy to build in, in Canva. This is one I built. This is a uh, flyer that I've, I've been modifying this one for the better part of three years. Um, some of you probably, like I've, I've visited several classes on campus recruiting to have students join uh, the Clarion and join Logos Magazine, join student media here, et cetera. And some of you have probably seen this flyer floating around uh, if for no other reason than a student might have left it behind. Uh, but this flyer has been, been uh, I've just updated every semester with the newest information and every, uh, you know, go print some out through Reprographics and then I have a flyer to share with, with potential students, which is pretty cool, so. Uh, And I, I can always tell, it's kind of funny, I can always tell when somebody else has used this template because of the, the, these slashing lines that go through the bottom. I've seen this temp, I really didn't update it from the template that much and I've seen others use the same template. It's kind of interesting, it's kind of cool. Uh, some other ones that I've been playing around with um, are uh, the motion graphics. Now that motion graphics are a part of Canva, you can't see it here, but I will show you in the motion graphics area. I click here for test one. I've learned how to make things animated and this arrow actually bounces up and down. And I can tell students just look for the bouncing arrow when you log in, right? When you go to go to wherever you need to go to, just look for the bouncing arrow and click the link there to go to your test. Okay. That's a lot more intuitive than just saying, well, go to this module and the link is, you know, right? being able to actually point to it with a moving arrow Students don't miss it that way. <laughs> That's pretty nice. And then calendars. I've been playing around with calendars, just having a graphic calendar that I can show when assignments are due. This, like, this is a calendar that I'm, I'm working on right now with, for my, my news writing class, my Com 101 students. And just having this be on like their, their announcements, like send out the weekly announcement and have, here's the calendar for the month, making sure we're on track. These are when things are coming up, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, again, just another way to take that good information that you're already producing and make it more visual and make it more appealing and hopefully to do so in a fairly quick way. Okay. All right, so I wanna play, I wanna take a, I wanna take a time out. First of all, I wanna play, right? But before we play in Canva, cause you can see I'm logged into Canva here before we play, Questions, thoughts, concerns, ideas, rants, compliments, criticisms, things y'all want to talk about right now. And I'll turn off screen share real quick. All right, so usually when there's, there's, 
a little bit of silence, like go ahead and throw things in into chat. So uh, infographic successful. Yes, let me let me get into uh, when we play. Maybe the first thing we'll dive into is infographics. Yes, and photographs. Yes, photographs are available on Canva. Uh, they got about two hundred thousand photographs available, but you can also upload any photo into Canva and use that as well. So. Uh, put alt text to the images. Yes, yes, you can put alt text to the images, to the graphics. There definitely are ways to uh, add alt text to, uh, to your stuff. And I believe you can do that through Canva as well. So, uh, right. links, adding a link to an image. So you can make your images links in Canvas. Right. Uh, so yeah, that's definitely possible, Celia. It's it's. Um, I can show you kind of that a little bit of that back end in Canvas as well to make the images actually links themselves. Yeah, yeah, that's that's totally doable. All right, cool. Let's play around a bit. Uh, let's go into all this fun stuff. Let me let me uh, share screen again. All right, so I built this. This is a, literally an active Canva template that I have right here for infographic or for, excuse me, for uh, presentations. Uh, but if we go just to the home tab, you can see uh, kind of what this looks like. You know, here's me working on my flyer. Here's me working on the calendar. Here's me messing around with some other stuff, uh, other flyers and other things I've built. Uh, and I say, I think a lot of the power of, of Canva is just in the templates area, right? Uh, so if somebody in, interested in post, posters or infographics, right? So there's a lot of that available, uh, but you can kind of see where these are, right? Uh, social media, and, and sometimes we get, again, we get twisted and we're like, oh, well, I'm not building something for Instagram. I'm building it for Canva. So where are all the Canvas templates? Again, don't get hung up on that, okay? Um, you know, Facebook covers is a great way to build banners, right? Uh, logos is a great way to build buttons. So even if the particular word you're searching for in templates isn't there, uh, there's a way to kind of build what you need, right? So if we go to infographics, you can see all of these templates that are already preset, pre-built, ready to go for you. Um, any of these look any more interesting than any other? Any requests to work with any of these? All right, we'll do types of shoes then. Okay. Uh, we will, by the way, as you're floating around in Canva, one of the things that you will see occasionally, we'll customize this, there we go, okay. uh, is a little crown. Okay. So instead of types of shoes, we're going to do types of journalists. Okay. Okay. Uh, it, this works very, very similar to a lot of other design programs or a lot of other art programs uh, to resize things. Let's try 60. Oh, hey, there we go. And of course, we can adjust all the fonts, all the colors, all the things. And if we want to move it, we just look for that little cross. And once you get the little cross, you can start moving things around or delete them or change their color, right? right. We don't like the gray. We're going to go big and bold. We're going to make things red, right? And it's, again, sometimes it's just a matter of playing. I love the idea of play to learn, right? Which means just go in here, start clicking around, try to break it and see what happens. Okay. Okay. And with Canva, it's pretty straightforward. Anything you want to change, you just click on it and you can change it, right? Pretty cool. Uh, importing templates. That's a good question. Uh, I don't, I don't know. I don't believe so. I think you're kind of stuck with the templates that they have, although there is something new. Um, and I haven't, I mentioned it right at the beginning of the presentation about template creation. I know it's a new thing. It's so new I haven't even messed around with it. Uh, so I don't have a good answer for you there. Right? Uh, so if we uh, 
want to change images, then here's kind of where we can have a lot of fun. Uh, the templates are here, so you can search for a whole bunch of different, oh, by the way, look at that, education infographic, you guys. A whole bunch of education infographic templates just right here. Uh, elements is the other place where a lot of this stuff comes up. You can see some of the ones I've recently used, but lines, shapes, graphics, photos, videos, right? Uh, uh, charts, tables, frames, grids, all kinds of cool stuff. Uh, but if we wanted to just go to photos, okay, uh, and we wanted to look for a journalist, let's see what happens. Okay. Um, I will throw this out there that when you see the little crown, Every, does everyone see the little crown here on this image? And so you see I hover, when I hover over it, it says pro. That's one of those images that you have to be a, a paying person to, uh, to access. And so anytime you see the little crown, they're trying to get you to pay money. So if you work around those images, uh, the ones that don't have the little crown on them. Like there we go. Here's our guy, our three, our three folks in our broadcasting area. So you see, as soon as I clicked, it just added it. And so we will get rid of the shoes. We'll move this over here. Get rid of the shoes. Get rid of this. And add. There we go. Add this person in. And you can see, like, when I start clicking on things, uh, different things show up. So here, it's if I want to adjust the size of this box, I can do that. And it stays proportional. Right? But I can also, if I double click it, now it's the image. So there's, the, again, the difference between the image and the frame. Uh, it's worth exploring. And then, you know, broadcasting. And then I can change this. Uh, maybe we have our online reporter. They're here. Oh no, there we go. And we can crop and resize. Oh, I saw something in the chat. Sorry about that. There we go, designing creators. Thank you, Celia, appreciate that. Uh, so it's all of a sudden we're, you can see we're on our way. This is, this is uh, kind of as simple as it is, right? Uh, and if we wanna play around with that, we can play around with that and, and do a little bit more with that. Uh, if you are interested in flyers, there's all kinds of flyer templates available. And the, the nice part about the flyers is most of them are pre-built to be eight and a half by 11. Right? So the flyer template like default size is just a, a sheet of paper. So you're able to uh, work with that and make, make that work a little bit easier than, uh, than you might normally. So, uh, and of course you can add as much text as you want, take off as much text as you want. Um, so, ooh, this one looks interesting. Let's try, there we go. We're gonna change this. It's not gonna say happy Friday anymore. It's gonna say happy Thursday, because today's Thursday. Uh, so again, we've got access to, I mean, there's a bunch of fonts here that you've got available to you. Uh, there are crowns on several of them, but you got a lot of options still. Uh, and say we don't we don't want the cursive. Say we want to go with something more ridiculous. Um, you know, so we're gonna go. There we go. We're gonna we're gonna make uh, something that sort of looks like Helvetica. Uh, and then if we wanted to get rid of our background, uh oh, watch out. Right. And maybe upload something. Right. You can see. This is sort of a preview of where we're going. I've uploaded this image from my computer, but I can also go upload in any images that I have on my, 
uh, on my desktop, I can upload. So if we go here, uh, we were messing around with some other photos the other day. How about, let's go, <gasps> there in photos. There's one. Uh, so this is a photo of me and one of my former editors. Right? Um, so we have this nice fire photo, but let's, let's, let's not, right? And there's Patrick working with Natalie, right? And then all of a sudden, we're able to do a lot more with this than maybe we thought we could at the beginning of the day, right? Uh, for adding text, there's this text area over here. You just drag and drop, add a heading, add a subheading, body text, right? And one of the cool things is that they really do try to help you out. So you can see when I'm dragging these around, it's trying to tell me, hey, this is now aligned. You see how those pink lines kind of show up on the side? That's telling me these boxes are now aligned, right? These boxes are now aligned. It's trying to help me out. It's trying to help put me, point me in the right direction. And I can also move multiple things at once, once I got them all together. Uh, I think one of the big things is trying to decide, again, what you really want this thing to look like in the end. And sometimes it's just a matter of, I don't know what I want until I start playing around. Right? So I'll play around, build some things, do some things, uh, and have fun with it. Okay. Uh, what does it mean photos are free for 30 days? I don't, I have no idea what it means when it says photos are free for 30 days. Um, because I've never had a problem using any of the photos. Um, uh, like all of the photos like here. Oh yeah, F unlock our entire library of premium photos free for 30 days. That doesn't mean that you can't use all of their normal free photos. 365 days a year. So, uh, and as far as equations or Greek letters, ooh, good question, good question. Let me double check uh, because for you math folks, it's gonna be a big deal. Um, can you use your own photos? Yes, absolutely. You can upload any photo that you want, it's yours. Uh, and then yes, it does um, save automatically. So like this, like all of this I've built, there's nowhere that I have to go and say save, right? So I've got this all built. I just hit the home button. And you can see it says here, recent happy Friday. If I open it though, it's happy Thursday. Yeah. So it does all the changes that you make. Okay. It, you know, I'm gonna be really ridiculous and put this over our faces. And then I just hit home, it's already all saved automatically. Yeah. You don't even have to hit home, it just saves it. Anytime you make a change, it saves it automatically. That's a really good question. So uh, as far as Greek letters, I do not have a specific answer. Uh, I wish I had a specific answer. There's probably something in text. So if we start messing around with text, uh, let me see if there's a, their chances are really good that if that's available, it's probably part of a specific font where those characters are available. That would be my best guess. And you can see, by the way, that was the short list of fonts that we were looking at. The long list of fonts, the more you scroll, right? you can see there's a lot of different ones. So if we tried Greek, there may be some Greek lettering, but that's a good question. I would have to explore that more. I'm sorry, I don't have the answer for that one. So, uh, but that's just playing around a little bit. Um, and I say the beauty of, of this, of all of this is just in the templates and, and just being able to go to the templates and say, I wanna mess around with some things, right? Uh, I wanna try some different things, right? Uh, I also wanna show you one more thing. And this was, we talked about the animation area. So animation is one of the things they've started building in. There's my moving arrow. Uh, and I actually built this, uh, you know, I was over here just messing around in logos. I took this Dust Road Motorsports logo, uh, plopped it in and just changed what the text was, deleted what I didn't want. And then I went to elements 
and I went to lines and shapes and I just got an arrow. I just brought the arrow onto my page and then there's a, this little button here, it says animate. Okay. And you get to choose some different things that it does, you know, rise, pan, fade. And so if we want this one to be, okay, say the test is here, we wanna get rid of that arrow, that's distracting. We want this arrow okay. and we want it to pan because now the test is on the right side. Okay. Okay. We can adjust where the arrow is pointing, how it's pointing, okay. uh, what kind of arrow it is, all that good stuff, the color, okay. we're gonna make it intense. We're gonna make it red arrow. Okay. Uh, we're gonna have it pan, that would be rise. There we go. Catch people's attention, rise in. And we, so we can change that, you know, animate on entrance, on exit, when people see it, it starts, or when it, people leave, it starts, right, or both how fast it goes, what direction it goes, right? Um, so there's a lot of like specific control you can put into an animation, which is kind of cool, right? And then when you're all done, oh, sorry, things in chat. So uh, yes, yes, that's what I'm getting to next is once you're done, once you feel like you've got a thing that is actually ready to share. Sorry, I got to move y'all out of my way to get to the share. Okay. Uh, so I say this is what I've got and I'm gonna go ahead and use this in my Canvas shell. Okay. Right here, share, okay. um, gives you opportunity to download. Okay. So once you've got something you wanna download, you can save it as whatever form you wanna save it, whether it's as a video or whatever if you wanted. Um, let's go to back to my happy Thursday. I like that a little bit better. Um, so we'll share, download, and they're gonna give you some options on what you want. Uh, I usually find that PNGs for bigger things are best uh, for integrating into Canvas um, because PNGs are universal. Um, sometimes I've run into trouble with PDFs on Canvas for some reason. So I just save them as PNGs. Uh, you can see here, you can't change the image size in Canva. Um, and then we're just gonna download, take a second to download. Oh yeah, put it on a t-shirt. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put this on a t-shirt. Uh, so it's saved, it's downloaded. And now I've kind of built in an announcement here. So this is my COM250 class. I'm just gonna put ignore this. I actually, okay. and then you just go right here to your images button, okay. upload your image. I think it'll be in downloads, good Friday flyer. Okay. Here's where our alt text is, by the way. I think, it's a, I think it's easier to put your alt text in Canvas than it is in Canva. I, to be honest, I'm not totally sure how you would do it in Canva, but in Canvas, this is where you add your alt text. And I know somebody had a question about that earlier. This is where you do that. So uh, a really poorly designed flyer. Only better, right? <laughs> only better, All right? Uh, then you embed your image, make sure embed image is there and you hit submit and it'll put the image onto Canvas. And there it is. Okay. So I highly, 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 highly recommend that when you do this, you hit image options, okay? Make sure that everything's good. And this is where you can resize in Canva or excuse me, in Canvas, you can resize in Canvas. And you can see this is way too big. You know, we maybe only want to run it at maybe 30% of its actual size. Okay. And there it is, resized, ready to go. Okay. And then I can add whatever text I want, just like a normal uh, announcement or module or a, an assignment or wherever you're putting this. Uh, it's all good to go right there. I'm gonna delay this posting. I don't wanna post it today. Let's post it tomorrow. All right. 
I hit save. And that's what it's going to look like for my students. Hooray. We did it. Uh, so real quick, I have a couple other things and then we'll get to questions. I just have a couple things I don't want to forget. Uh, I, I want to make sure we talk about them and then we'll get into all your questions that are showing up on, on chat. Some great questions, by the way. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for bringing good questions. Uh, make, uh, makes it a, a lot 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 easier for for all of us so i like I say a couple things i didn't want to forget um all right uh just some thoughts of things you could build uh, action guides i love being able to give students a step-by-step -step, right so an action guide uh infographics obviously buttons uh headers slides supplements uh, a checklist is so awesome as, as opposed to like a, just a list and an announcement, you can give it as a graphic, way, way, way more interesting things you can do. Uh, there also are some plugins that you can use. I have not tried any of that. I've just used the free templates that are available, okay. uh, but it's out there. Um, one of the big downfalls of Canva that I need to tell you about right now using Canva is that there is a Canva for education that exists for K-12 educators. Here's where we boo. Okay. Uh, that makes it more challenging for us. There are more integration options with Canvas for K-12 educators than there are for community college educators. So it's a little bit more on us uh, to do what we need to do independently, which kind of sucks. Uh, last thing I want to mention is just con consider DEI, diversity, equity, inclusion, when you're building your things uh, in Canvas, it, it's really easy, just like with any sort of thing that's reliant on stock imagery, it's important to consider that stock imagery and stock graphics may not represent our students, right, or may paint a different version of our students than actually exists. And I wanted to sh point out that every, every one of the photos that I used in today's presentation actually came from these inclusive and diverse stock photo sites. Uh, so please give that a consideration. Please give that a thought. Um, don't make everything um, either, you know, you know, don't make everything look like a typical student because most of our students aren't typical, right? Uh, and this is the end. So uh, I've seen some great questions. Um, and I want to want to be able to tackle all of them uh, as much as I can. Uh, so, uh, thoughts, questions, concerns that popped up. Uh, printing. If you want to print, I, I recommend downloading and then just printing from a different application. Don't try to print straight from Canvas. Canvas tries to give you the option of printing flyers using their company. We've got Reaper Graphics. Let's just download, and, and I would recommend using Reaper graphics or printing from your own printer if you need to. But yes, you can download and, and, and just print from there. Um, slideshows on Canva, yes, that uh, I'm sorry, I didn't have the, the, the chance to jump in with the template, but there's a template in there that's like slideshow. So the slides I was showing you today, that was all built from a, the slideshow template. So, um, and Yes. So as buttons, a type of template, no buttons doesn't, there's not a template for buttons. There's a template for logo though. And I use the logo template for building buttons. And I, and the ones I shared to you today, uh, the professor who built those um, buttons on her site also used just the logo template. So the logo template is, is it, I, those are the two that, that she said she uses the most, the logo template and the Facebook banner template. Um, and it's almost 350. So any other questions or any other things I can show you? Any other options? If, if it's cool with everyone, maybe I'll take just a second and show you where the template is for building presentations for like building slideshows and stuff. Cool. All right. So if we go to, here we go, Canva. Okay. Uh, and it is under templates. Oh gosh, I didn't mean to click templates. That's right. That's right here. There's a presentations tab. So uh, presentation 16 by nine is the one I used. So presentation 16 by nine. And then there it is, minimalist template. That's the one I just used today. So 
Uh, but you, as you can see, there are several other options out there. Uh, some of them have crowns, some of them don't. But again, you can take this template and destroy it as much as you want. And then you've got your own template. Uh, and, and let me show you kind of one of the nice things about this. So if we go back to where I started the day, okay. and if I leave, hold on. Um, let me bring up this view. Now I feel like I don't have to hide my slides. Um, and, uh, I have this option right here. Uh, when I when I click here, excuse me. Oh, sorry, y'all are getting in the way. That box is just getting in the way. Um, go. There we go. Now I can see them slide by slide. And if I want to go in and edit, say we're going to edit this one. This is the one we really like. And we're going to go in and edit it. But I can also go back to my slides and click here and just hit this, either add page or duplicate page. When I hit duplicate page, it carries over. You can see now I have two versions of that page. It carries over all of the, the ways that I broke it uh, and built it. And now I can also take this one and drop it into a new presentation. And that's pretty cool. So. Other questions, I've, I've, I feel like I've been just kind of playing in front of you for like the last 15, 20 minutes. Uh, what I recommend is you do the same, right? Go sign up for Canva again, it's free. Um, and just play around, like try to, try to build something cool. Uh, if you break it, no worries, you can't, you're not going to break the site. Um, and when you get, it can be very overwhelming. Just simplify what you're trying to do. Just say, I want to build one logo and then only go where you need to go to make that happen, right? Don't overwhelm yourself with all the possibilities, all the possible tools, just build one thing. Um, and then once you've got that, then you can build one more thing. And then you build one more thing and you don't have to tear up your courses or your presentations overnight. This is a gradual and, and I've, I've been gradually doing this kind of thing for for several years. Every every time I try to add a little bit more is am I done? <laughs> Never going to be done. Right. Uh, but constantly trying to rethink, OK, how can I do this a little bit better and how can I use graphics to make it happen? So. Awesome questions, awesome thoughts. Thank you all. Uh, and I appreciate your time, thoughts, attentions. If you have any questions, I'll hang out for a few minutes. Otherwise, thank you for being here. Um, and especially on a Thursday afternoon, thank you for being here. Uh, and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Enjoy your weekend. Enjoy the rest of the semester. Thanks, thank everyone. You, Patrick. Thank you, Patrick. Bye, everyone. Thank you.